SCP Foundation Amnestic Use Classified The following revision to this document, version 7.8, was approved by the Ethics Committee on the 21st of July 2013 for use by personnel at Research Site 45. Disclaimer. This is not to be used as a training manual. Training manuals are given during the actual classes. To request training, please send an official request to your immediate supervisor. Take note that this is a site-specific document. Please refer to your on-site protocols regarding amnestic use. The purpose of this document is to provide Foundation personnel with a quick reference guide as to the usage, effects, and protocol regarding amnestics. An amnestic is an amnesia-inducing agent that can take many different forms. For the purposes of the Foundation, it is mainly used in suppressing sensitive information by expunging intangible memories. In most cases, they are applied post-incident. The use of amnestics is decided on a case-by-case -case basis unless the authority of higher clearance levels is invoked, as explained in the following pages. Amnestics are considered one of the most powerful tools in use by the Foundation. Great care and proper training is mandatory in the handling and application of amnestics in an appropriate manner. The abuse of amnestics is strictly prohibited and will result in disciplinary action, demotion, or both. In all cases, the Ethics Committee has the final word on approval and decisions regarding amnestic use and misuse respectively. Class A Visual Code Single Black Stripe Clearance Use Trained Level 1 and above Delivery Methods Aerosol Effectiveness 6 to 12 hours Usage Protocols Approved for general field use Side Effects Sedation Headaches Nausea Detailed Description Gaseous Class A is the most commonly used amnestic in the field. The main benefit when using Class A is that it can be administered to not only one, but many individuals. In some documented cases, Class A has been used on entire populations with the aid of aerial application. Other applications also include 40mm cartridges that can be launched to deliver Class A into an enclosed area or room, as well as small handheld aerosol sprayers for single use. Because of its chemical composition, accidental overdose is extremely unlikely with minimal training on Class A applications. This safety feature allows Class A to be used liberally as an inhalant. It is also convenient in use as it requires little to no follow-up on affected individuals as it has a 98.7% success rate. Class A is ideal for use by field agents, rapid response teams, and MTF groups. The only concern when using Class A is accidental self-application. Personnel trained in the use of Class A are instructed in the use of application devices as well as environmental conditions that may cause an incident. It is recommended that at least one other Foundation employee be present during the application of Class A as to facilitate the continuation of duties in case of accidental self-application by a user. Class B Visual Code Double Aqua Stripe Clearance Use Trained Level 2 and above Delivery Methods Oral Injection Effectiveness 20-72 to 72 hours Usage Protocols Approved for general field use Side Effects Sedation Prolonged Paresthesia Migraines Blurred Vision Detailed Description Chemically, there is little difference between Class A and Class B. The main difference is the application. Class A is inhaled, whereas Class B is either ingested or injected directly into the bloodstream. Used in this fashion, Class A is allowed to have a larger effect on the body than it would normally have. Class B commonly comes in the form of dissolving tablets or liquid. The most common delivery method is by dissolving Class B tablets into water and allowing the individual to ingest it. Use of Class B is also commonly employed in ballistic syringes and launched via compressed gas. Class B is just as safe to use as Class A, making it ideal for use in many departments. Class B also has a record of far fewer accidental self-application incidents than Class A, due in part to its delivery and storage, allowing for a single user to administer without the presence of an additional staff. Class C Visual Code Triple Bronze Stripe Clearance Use Level 3 Authorization and above Delivery Method Injection Effectiveness 4 to 9 days Usage Protocols General use for post-interrogations or detainment at a Foundation-controlled site. Side effects. Sedation. Slight paralysis. Medical attention required. Detailed description. 
Unlike Class A and Class B, Class C is a much more potent variant. As such, the after effects and risk inherent in the application of Class C requires the aid of Foundation medical personnel. Persons must have medical training to administer Class C via syringe directly into the bloodstream. Class C is mainly employed to detained individuals so that Class C can be used in a controlled setting. Afterwards, detainees may be released only after being cleared by medical staff. Class C is not approved for general field use and may only be requested by investigators, interrogators, and any other Level 3 approved usage. Class C has a 92.8% success rate and may require follow-up examinations or doses. Personnel are prohibited from using Class C on a single individual more than four times. Class D Visual Code Checkered Olive Band Clearance Use Requires at least two Level 3 personal authorization and supervision to be administered. Delivery Methods Injection Two-stage dose through IV Effectiveness Plus three weeks Usage Protocols To be used to counter effects of anomalous psychosis and or mimetic incursions. Side effects. Sedation. Paralysis. Post-incident rehabilitation required. Possible brain damage. Detailed description. Class D once held a lower designation until it was superseded and replaced with a more appropriate amnestic, C Class C, for use on detainees. Before that, Class D was employed regularly with limited success in individuals as many adverse effects of the brain after application were found to be inadmissible by the Ethics Committee. Thus, Class D was reviewed and found to be more appropriately used in cases where brain damage or a major chronic chemical imbalance was already prevalent in the individual. These cases usually involve anomalous mental effects and or mimetic incursions of the mind. Because the effects of mimetics can be largely unknown, the use of a potent and riskier amnestic was approved as an option as to counter or control the effects. Class D can only be employed by medical staff in a controlled setting. Level 3 supervision is required as to facilitate the protection of medical staff from the patient if needed. Class E Visual Code Vertical Salmon Bar Clearance Use Level 4 Request Pending Case Decision by the Ethics Committee Delivery Methods Injection Multiple Stage Doses Through IV Effectiveness Complete Recall Expungement Usage Protocols In situations where the individual's identity is deemed to be a threat, Side effects, sedation, long-term paralysis, possible brain damage or catatonic systems, post-incident rehabilitation required. Detailed description, Class E can only be given by medical staff in a controlled setting after a formal request has been submitted by Level 4 staff and approved by the Ethics Committee. Upon administration, medical staff will be required to oversee the individual during recovery. Only 0.02% of individuals entered a permanent vegetative state after being administered Class E. In these cases, the individual will be remitted to an appropriate civilian hospital indefinitely. Additional details. Class E is not an amnestic. It is intentionally designed to put the individual into a drug-induced coma permanently. It is to be used in cases where termination of an individual is not possible or preferable. Foundation staff of level 3 or lower are not permitted to know the actual purpose of Class E. For all intents and purposes, Class E rehabilitation is to be interpreted as entirely possible and any observed adverse effects are to be explained as being the rare exception rather than the desired outcome. Persons administering Class E may only do so once during their employment as to prevent suspicion. Class F Visual Code Solid Silver Band Clearance Use Level 4 Authorization Human Trial Testing Delivery Methods Injection Multiple stage doses used in conjunction with other psychotropics, visual audio stimuli, electroconvulsive therapy, effectiveness, memory recall expungement, and identity reconditioning, usage protocols, experimental use only, pending formal review, side effects, sedation, short term paralysis, increased susceptibility to visual or audio stimuli. Detailed description Class F is currently in the alpha stages of testing. All data on human trials are currently under review by the Ethics Committee. In all human trials, 83.9% succeeded in complete retention of the respective reconditioned identities. The entire process approximately takes 5 days of continuous conditioning and therapy to produce the desired effect. Class F can only be administered under the direction of psychology and medical staff in a controlled and completely isolated setting. 
Class F is administered with a combination of other psychotropics to allow the individual to accept external input for reconditioning with limited subconscious resistance. External visual and audio stimuli will need to be personalized based on the individual's original psyche and their resulting fabricated identity for maximum probability of success. Coupled with the additional aid of electroconvulsive therapy, Class F is very effective in identity reconditioning. Afterward, individuals may be released into the general population under minimal observation. In regard to specific SCPs, Class F has been discussed as a passive and safer alternative to physical containment. Classified Ennui Protocol O5 Use Only Visual Code Puce Icon Clearance Use Unanimous Decision by O5 Council Delivery Methods Unknown Effectiveness Unknown Usage Protocols For Emergency Use Only Side Effects Unknown Detailed Description To Whom It May Concern If You're Reading This Then Something Horrible Has Happened and despite your best efforts, this is your last desperate option. To be honest, there's no way to know what will happen. Whomever in their infinite wisdom made this hastily scribbled the instructions on a notepad in the O5 office so very long ago. These instructions for the so-called Ennui Protocol explain the necessity of a unanimous decision by this council, a long code consisting of all O5 private employee numbers in reverse order typed into our work terminal and that it should be referenced somewhere so we can find it again. This way, we don't forget about it in situations like this. We assume it affects everyone in some fashion, we hope. Don't bother looking into it. Whatever the actual device or agent or cognito hazard or mimetic phrase or some other abstract thing is, it's hidden very well somewhere in the bowels of Research Site 45, and the people who put it there are either dead or have long since forgotten about it. The truly bewildering thing is we don't even know how many times we've used the Omni Protocol before this. We have to relearn it every time it seems. Even as I'm writing this, we're preparing to invoke it off-site. So, I am attempting to convey all the little clues left here and there and consolidate it in this handwritten note for either my future self or other O5 council members. Apparently, there are things that even us O5s hide from ourselves. The only thing we know is that it has worked before. Good luck and Godspeed. Secure, contain, protect. O5. End of file. To learn more about the SCP Foundation, subscribe to SCP Orientation today and turn the notification bell on so you don't miss any of our videos.